what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out jeff hardy a spiral no one ever wanted now we recently got an update that jeff hardy won't be uh going to uh prison or whatnot um he will have his license suspended for the next 10 years you got to do a whole bunch of programs and community service and pay a fine but he doesn't have to go to prison for his uh, repeated offenses so i know some people are like ah oh, maybe he should to learn his lesson i don't know but um ultimately he he needs to get things situated and it's crazy because he's beloved by so many people but he is been dealing with the alcohol abuse and, and and substance abuse mostly just alcohol related for quite some time so we're gonna check out this video by none other than super kick studios y'all go subscribe to him if you haven't already let's get right into this one man you had to put the viewer discretion advice on there Jeff Hardy is one of the most exciting, electric, and beloved performers in pro wrestling history. Truly a one-of-a-kind human with a connection to the audience that you just can't manufacture. A daredevil who put his body on the line with a one-of-a-kind look and aura to him. For many, the charismatic enigma was someone that they always wanted to be when they were younger. Whether it was the original face paint, the neon arm sleeves, his way of dressing, or even hitting his signature swanton bomb into mm -hmm. pools or on trampolines, he was tailor-made to entertain. In 1994, he made his WWE debut at the age of 16, and in 1998, he and his brother Matt signed with the company. The Hardy Boys became one of the most popular tag teams in the WWE, and slowly they were both on the rise. A look that stood out, their reactions started to get better and better because of the work they put in. Eventually, they met their wrestling soulmates in the Dudley Boys and Edge and Christian. These mm -hmm. guys put on the legendary triangle ladder matches that to this day are still seen as the holy grail of tag team wrestling. Facts. The performances opened a lot of eyes. It was only a matter of time before the Hardy Boys broke up and branched off into singles competition, particularly Jeff. He simply had a star quality to him, and he was the personification of the late 90s and early 2000s. The way he dressed, the way his hair looked, and of course, the daredevil antics. By 2001, he beat Triple H to win the Intercontinental Championship, and in 2002, Hardy had a breakout performance against The Undertaker on Raw for the undisputed WWE I title. Remember that. He pushed Taker to the limit and showed the audience and those backstage <laughs> that he was ready to take the next step and had outgrown the tag team division. Mm -hmm. Undertaker even showed Hardy respect after the match. When Jeff was put up against main event talent, he showed up and he showed out. Now, that was one of the coolest moments in Monday Night Raw history. JR commentary was fantastic. Climb the ladder, kid. It was so good. And even though he lost, he won that night. The Undertaker raising his hand. Bro, he, he, bro. Oh, it was like, yo, they're about to strap the rocket ship to his back and he's going straight to the moon. It looked like it was time for him to start climbing the ladder to becoming one of WWE's biggest stars, but that wouldn't be for a while. Due to the wear and tear on his body and the grueling travel schedule, Jeff had developed addiction to drinking and drugs with his performances starting to suffer. Most notably at Survivor Series 2002 where he completely forgot to push Rico off the top rope to the point where Rico was screaming at him. WWE offered him drug rehab, but he refused to go. In a 2006 article on WWE.com, it was described by the website's executive director as, quote, a poisonous drug addiction. Bruce Damn. Richard on his podcast said that it was illicit substances and that the company told him to either go to rehab or go altogether. JR backed this up on his podcast, saying that Hardy was in total denial and that Jeff believed that he didn't have a problem. He failed drug tests and displayed behavioral problems because he simply didn't care and Jeffs even said that he believed that this was an out on wrestling for him altogether. So him having an unwillingness to go to rehab forced WWE to release him in 2003. Yeah. Following this, he went to Ring of Honor in an infamous match where the crowd booed him, chanted F you Hardy, we want Matt and Rain chanted you got fired onto him. One of the most hostile matches you'll ever see. Damn. From here, Jeff basically left wrestling altogether until he showed up in TNA in 04. By the following year, things looked like they were alright and Jeff had taken time to figure out what was wrong, but that simply wasn't the case. Another suspension came his way after he failed to show up to 2005's Hard Justice pay-per-view where he was scheduled to wrestle Raven. 
He missed multiple flights out of North Carolina to Orlando, but it was reported that he made it to the hotel that everyone else was staying at. Technically speaking, this wasn't related to any drugs or substance abuse that the public knows of, but it didn't end there in 2005 for him. Jeff was again suspended by TNA for failing to appear at Turning Point. It should be mentioned that TNA had a more relaxed wellness policy than the WWE. They were also notorious for taking on those who had substance abuse issues. By 2006, he hadn't really found a turning point himself, so TNA decided to let him go. Three years ago, this was a career that was destined for success. Now, fired from the WWE, hated in ROH, and then let go by TNA. He was stuck in a spiral, and he just couldn't get out of this, and the problems kept coming back, and they kept getting worse. Jeff didn't take a sustained period of time away from wrestling to address them. Well, now WWE decided to give him another shot. On August 4th, mm -hmm. 2006, the company announced that they had re-signed Jeff Hardy. When he came back, he teamed up with his brother Matt, won the Intercontinental Championship, and was back to re-establish himself all over again. Mm -hmm. As a single star was where WWE really saw him because he was just that damn popular. But in July of 2007, he had another wellness policy violation. Jeff took to his website to say this was because of injury, but it was a false cover-up, with the moderators refusing to acknowledge that this was the case. Figure 4 Online reported that this was in fact a suspension because he conveniently rocked up 30 days later. This was also backed up by Jim Ross on his blog. When he returned, guess what? He was again put into a prominent role because again, WWE... Bro, it's crazy how over he is for him to mess up, come back, put him in a prominent role because people love Jeff Hardy, dog. Believed in him and they saw what they had. He and Triple H were the sole survivors against Team Umaga, and this started a rivalry between the two where Jeff pinned Triple H to become mm -hmm. the number one contender for the WWE title. He got his match at the Royal Rumble against Randy Orton, but didn't win it. It looked like that the WWE was just holding off for a little bit. Heading into that year's WrestleMania, Jeff was set to be in and win the Money in the Bank match, according to many reports. But this time, he had yet another violation of the wellness policy, Jeez. this time getting slapped with a 60-day suspension exactly a year after his first violation. This caused him to miss WrestleMania and CM Punk to win the money in the bank in his place. Jeff wow. was just inflicting wounds on himself at this point, failing to see what's in front of him. It is important to remember that what the person was going through behind the scenes, we don't know and we can't really comment of on. Of course. That Three days following his suspension, his house burned to the ground in the process, killing his dog. Yeah. Again, you would think that because he had consistently broke WWE's trust and failed at every given turn, that there would be further repercussion on TV and they'd lose complete faith in him. It was actually the complete opposite. When he returned to the WWE, he was put into the title picture again, continuing his rivalry with Triple H, which saw him show more aggression and even get a WWE title match in four of the final five pay-per-views of 2008. In September of that year, Jeff had an incident at a Nashville airport where he was denied boarding because of intoxication. Sheesh. It's reported he still got his flight later in the day. He didn't cause a scene and he was professional about the incident. Towards the end of 2008, Jeff was scheduled to be in a triple threat match with Vladimir Kozlov and Triple H for the WWE mm, title. Vladimir. But a report came out saying that he was found unconscious in his hotel room and that he wouldn't compete in the match. Of course, those substance abuse issues, this was just a storyline tool. Maybe mm -hmm. not the best idea considering yeah. wrestlers like Eddie Guerrero were found dead in their hotel room. After he returned, he finally captured the WWE Championship at Armageddon 2008, the same pay-per-view where it really all began the previous year. And here he was. He did yeah. it. He was at the mountaintop. He was essentially the... I remember that. I was like, oh, this is such a great moment. He's finally the WWE Champion. I was like, oh, this is beautiful. Biggest star in the WWE even though Triple H wasn't over the moon about him being the WWE champion. Hardy was outselling John Cena in merchandise, mm -hmm. and if anything, the championship in his hands was a symbol that he should turn things around and look at what's in front of him and never, ever reach that dark place ever again. It Following a short WWE championship reign, Jeff was put into a program with the World Heavyweight Champion, and that was Edge at the time. He beat him for the world title in a ladder match at Extreme Rules, and then he was cashed in on by CM Punk. Mm -hmm. and this began a rivalry where his addiction was was brought into storyline two contrasting characters punk straight edge i love this feud 
and Jeff Hardy, who had turned to pills and alcohol many, many oh, times. Oh, I love this In this feud, Punk started calling Hardy weak for turning to drugs and alcohol on TV, even referencing eye drops, saying that this was the only way you get a prescription medication, saying that unlike Jeff, this was the only foreign substance that was going to go into his body. Punk got enraged at the fans that they were supporting an addict, saying that he's so never been good. suspended or been to a rehab facility. This rivalry eventually led to a loser leaves WWE steel cage match and Punk beat Hardy, causing Jeff to leave. Usually these are just storyline plays with the wrestler eventually coming back, but Jeff actually left. His contract was coming to an end, decided not to re-sign, and left on his own accord. The reason being was physical burnout. If I didn't mention it earlier, Jeff's style was one of risk, high of flying, throwing caution to the wind constantly putting his body on the line quite literally jumping off anything and from anywhere yeah when jeff hardy left wwe he had two herniated discs in his Ooh. lower back as well as neck issues his Jeez. goal was to heal up come back to the wwe but that wouldn't be for another eight years wwe didn't want him to become a pure liability and for things to spiral even further mm -hmm. shortly thereafter in september of 2009 Jeff Hardy was arrested on five major drug charges. Yeah. He had his home raided with him being arrested under possession and trafficking controlled prescription pills, as well as possession of cocaine, trafficking of opium. His home Jeez. was searched and the police seized 262 Vicodin prescription pills, Ooh. 180 Soma prescription pills, 555 milliliters of anabolic steroids and cocaine. The Damn. estimated street value of the drugs was $2,500. He'd eventually plead guilty to this and served 10 days in jail. His addictions were for sure affecting his career, but things spiraled even more. In 2010, on the same day he was charged for the offense that I just mentioned, he returned to TNA. And the company from there pushed him as one of their top stars, and he even won the TNA World Championship. CM Punk mocked Jeff Hardy's arrest and referenced it on WWE mm -hmm. TV. A video emerged of Jeff and Matt at a diner. <laughs> Jeff rambling on about how he made CM Punk a star, how wrestlers like The Undertaker showed him respect, but Punk just ignored his existence and went right to the showers without saying a word, and also that Punk was taking Ambien to sleep. Jeff Hardy in a 2012 interview said, quote, CM Punk is crazy talented. We don't stay in touch or have contact, but I have nothing bad to say about the guy. Getting back to his TNA run, things went off the rail and he was at his absolute worst. It was December of 2010 at the final resolution pay-per-view. On that day, Mike Johnson of PW Insider reported that Jeff was going to be pulled from the pay-per-view following concerns of his behavior backstage after arriving to the event. There were conflicting reports on what was actually happening, whether the card would be changed or not, and apparently it was just an overblown misunderstanding. He later faced off against Matt Morgan. Nothing too noticeable, it was a slower match. <clears throat> Following it, there were other reports that said Hardy was quote, hammered backstage. When TNA was asked for comment, they said that the whole thing was a misunderstanding as the company just finished a tour of Dubai and Hardy was just tired. Nothing Definitely to this day has been up confirmed. For the guy. But the following year, things reached the most unfathomable low they ever could. 2011 and the infamous Victory Road pay-per-view where Jeff Hardy was set to face off against Sting. He showed up to the match clearly under the influence mm -hmm. on live pay-per-view broadcast. Lethargic, confused on where he was, and someone who truly should not have been on television that night. Yeah. He was in a zombie-like state with a dazed look on his face, even taking 40 seconds to show up onto the entranceway. Referee Brian Hebner throwing up the X because Jeff was in no fit state to compete. Yep. Out came Eric Bischoff to relay the message to Sting and Jeff Hardy that this was going to be a quick finish. And it went all of 88 seconds. Sting hit his finish and forcefully covered Jeff, who got up and just looked confused. Fans then chanted bullshit, to which Sting said, I agree. Because of the Damn. incident, TNA apologized and gave everyone who bought the event access to TNA On Demand for six months. Damn. Following this, Jeff was suspended from TNA and completed 120 days in rehab and returned later in the year. Jeez. In 2021, Eric Bischoff said that Hardy arrived at the normal call time for talent and then disappeared for hours. And in those hours that he disappeared, he took the drugs. Next time he was seen was moments before the match. And this was a situation that was completely out of hand yeah. because no one saw this earlier. Bischoff said that Dixie Carter wasn't there and basically no one in a position of power was, so he took it upon himself to try to get the match over as quick as possible, which should be commended. 
Following this, no one from TNA contacted Jeff Hardy for a month, according to Bruce Pritchard. After this, he returned. He established himself right back up again for a second time, regaining Jeez. everyone's trust and remaining consistent. There were no issues on the surface. He even resurrected his Will of the Wisp character. Outside of wrestling, he was working on his music, released an album, and he was just doing his thing. It's a shame that it took such a widely crapped on incident for him to finally gain consistency. By yeah. 2017, he re-signed with the WWE. Which was a pretty cool moment. Made an amazing return at WrestleMania 30. Great moment. Winning the tag team titles in the most hearty way possible. Yeah. It looked as though everything had subsided. Everything that had been plaguing him. Everything that had been wrong. His demons were just that. Demons. But be it the heavier road schedule, he again spiraled back into this. In June 2018, he received a 120-day suspended jail sentence and was fined $300 after he pleaded guilty to a DWI charge from March of that year. During that time, he crashed into a guardrail, causing his sedan to spin. He reportedly ran off the roadway, hitting 105 feet of guardrail before the Damn. back end of the car spun around and finally stopped. Police estimated on the scene that Hardy caused $13,000 worth of damages, with 8,000 for his totaled car and 5,000 for the crushed guardrail. In addition to all of this, he had to go to alcohol counseling and had to turn in his license. In this one, he had a 0.25 blood alcohol level, which is three times the limit Jeez. in North Carolina. WWE addressed the arrest saying that, quote, Jeff Hardy is responsible for his own personal actions. We are investigating the matter and awaiting information from local law enforcement officials. He was immediately booked for misdemeanor while driving intoxicated. Jeez. Hardy the following year was recovering from a knee injury in 2019. And for some reason, even approaching his 40s, he still couldn't shake this off. The first incident was he was publicly intoxicated in South Carolina. Police saying they received a report of him being intoxicated in Myrtle Beach and that Hardy was passed out in a public stairwell. When the police arrived, he admitted that he had been drinking vodka. He was charged with public intoxication, posted bail, and was released on the same day. The case is considered closed since he paid the fine. Yeah. The downward spiral continued with him getting his second DWI in just as many years in October of 2019, this time while driving with a revoked license and three times the blood alcohol level again, blowing a 0.25. Matt Hardy released a statement saying that since so many have asked me about my brother tonight, I love my brother and want him to be happy and healthy. I've expressed that to him as much as I can. Jeff has to make his decision about his life. I have to focus on my two boys and soon to arrive son. Damn. I can only control my actions. And Bones this is true. I'm I'm sure Matt has had so many conversations with his brother. But once again, there's only so much you can do. You know what I'm saying? You can't be with someone 24-7. He has his own family, his own life. So, you know, what do you do when your brother just is not listening? And he, he finds himself back doing the same thing I don't, what do you do damn and nearly a year away he returned to the wwe because he was still under contract and again wwe utilized him as much as they could he told Corey graves that he had a conversation with wwe and said quote i need help i need treatment there's something wrong with me with this alcohol thing yeah and he was pretty adamant that if he simply stopped drinking he wouldn't be in trouble this was a man aware of his actions he knew exactly yeah. what was going wrong how it was happening and how it could be prevented following his return wwe brought jeff's personal issues to tv again mm -hmm. this time in a more expanded way the storyline targeted booze pills sheamus calling him a junkie and they yeah. really went all into this sheamus even tried to get jeff to drink again jeff working on his sobriety trying to be a better husband a better yeah. father they even ran a segment where jeff took a urine test on tv and he was arrested to begin the whole thing they really didn't spare anything in this storyline a short while later, things went sideways again. On December 4th, 2021, Jeff Hardy was competing at a live event and mm -hmm. during a tag match, disappeared into the crowd, failing to return. The following night, he didn't even compete because he was sent home from the house show loop. After this, WWE offered him to go to rehab, which he didn't accept, yep. so the company released him. From yep, there, he signed with All that. Elite Wrestling, and on June 13th, 2022, Hardy was arrested for driving under the influence, again with a suspended license. This situation is just sad. I don't even know what else to call it. A video showed Hardy completely confused on where he was. 
clearly in zero condition to be operating a vehicle, unable to perform anything asked by the officers. Yeah, nah, he, he was arrested for yeah, driving under the up, influence, bro. this marking his fourth arrest in total and third DUI offense in a decade. Throughout this video, I've talked about the various issues that Jeff has faced in his career. He's had countless chances, and if it was any lesser performer, their career would have been finished by now. Fact. But even after the violations, even after screwing up, Jeff was given prominent roles within the companies he worked for. If Jeff would have been able to clean things up a lot earlier, his career would have been a lot different. That's not even an if, that's almost a guarantee. Mm -hmm. But there's always these incidents, these suspensions, and these troubles hanging over him. No one's perfect, and a character like Jeff is one we're probably never going to see again. A guy with a natural charisma and it factor who just meshed with the fans like no one else. Mm -hmm. But he just couldn't stay out of his own way. And he really was destined for greatness. The only guy who got in his path was himself. Perhaps. But for many, he also became a liability. <laughs> chance after chance. Today, Hardy is still adored and will forever be a fan favorite. But this is a spiral that no one ever wanted for such a beloved performer. Everything surrounding him makes the story fascinating and at the same time unfortunate. The tale of Jeff Hardy is an interesting one. One which continues to live on today. But as the lyrics in his music suggest, he was the architect of his own defeat. Damn, man, this was a this was actually a sad video. We just talked about it at the beginning of the video of yeah he him not having to go to jail for uh, uh go to prison and to serve any prison time. But the counter argument is that how many times will you give someone a chance? How many times do you have to say hey? get it together how many times you have to go to rehab like it's 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 becoming one of those things and i i think honestly i know a lot of people i we talked about it uh last week some of you guys or a week before last some of you guys was like nah he's had too many opportunities no you know what I'm saying he needs to serve some jail time well he's got spared once again so the question is will he get it this time i don't know i hope he does i'm praying that he does the dude is very talented, but I do honestly think, and I said this initially with the whole him going to rehab and getting arrested and all this other stuff. I said this initially. I think it's time for him to hang it up. I think just the the toll it takes on his body, him feeling like he needs the drugs to deal with the pain and all this other stuff that that's, you know, hurting him, you know, which comes with the territory. I think he needs to hang it up. I love Jeff and I, I would I would hate to hear some horrible news because of his, you know, substance abuse. And I think we all would. So I think it's time for him to hang it up. I think he needs to get his stuff together and just focus just uh focus on on his on his on his life. Focus on, you know, living out his days, you know what I'm saying? But getting back in the ring, I think it's time for him to hang it up, bro. Because it seems like every time he gets back in the ring, he's good. But then he's probably dealing with pain issues and all this other stuff. So he ends up resorting back to the same things that got him suspended in the first place. Drugs, substance abuse. So I think it's time for him to just, it's time for him to let it go. It sucks. We have to say this. But at this point, it's not about wrestling. It's about his well-being. So comment down below. Let me know. How do you guys feel? Do you guys think... It's time for Jeff to go ahead and hang up the boots. Let me know how you guys feel about that. Do you think he he can get one more run in? I, me personally, I just think it's time for him to just chill. So, but I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K, and I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world, and also in the Clutch World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.